By the end of the show, two things were clear. Liv Morgan certainly proved that she belongs in the title picture, and Becky Lynch proved that Memphis, Tennessee is lynch mob country. I saw that second one going differently in my head. Let's move on. I'm John Renton with my review, WWE Raw from, yes, Memphis, Tennessee. And there were some shenanigans, some roll-ups, some count-ups, and some atypical stuff to pad out a three-hour edition of Raw, and also a lot of hype for the day one pay-per-view, which is happening on, wait for it, New Year's Day, which is the first day of the year. I know, shocking. If you don't possess a calendar or the benefit of understanding what days are, that may shock you. And if you didn't know that WWE is having a day one pay-per-view, they're here to remind you a lot of times during the whole show, though it makes sense because they're not having a pay-per-view in December. That's kind of nice. We get a bit of a break. Hey, maybe they could actually do something to build some proper feuds, or they could just give us Miz versus Edge, which is a feud I'm not sure that many people want. But there's more stuff on this show, like recaps of Owens, Biggie, and Rollins, who are going to be at day one Human Centipede together, and I think that's going to be Kevin Owens's last WWE appearance. Unless he wants to re-sign, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. I'd just be surprised if he didn't end up being all elite at some point. Uh, but Rollins uh, is in a back alley somewhere. I have no idea. I thought he was going to try to do some weird rendition of West Side Story, which is a remake um, that's coming out in just a few days. Directed by Steven Spielberg, who's wanted to direct that for a number of years, and they finally decided to give it to him when he's about 80 million years old. But anyway, enough about movies. He's like saying, enjoy the show. Oh, we are the chorus. We hope you like our show. We know you're rooting for us, but now we have to go. It would have been kind of funny if he actually did that. So Biggie is all fired up, and he says he's going to take down Kevin Owens tonight. And you're thinking, steel cage match. Okay, they're going to have that middle of the show, main event of the show. They didn't have it in the main event. They had it at the start of the show. Okay, it's starting to show off hot. Can't necessarily blame them. Uh, it's uh, Biggie making his entrance. Owens said that he will punish him, and that's no lie, and they had a steel cage match where an African-American man was locked in a steel cage in Memphis, and I thought that 1865 was a long time ago. Moving on from that, um, did you know that a champion does not have to be pinned in a triple threat match to lose her championship? Don't worry if you did not know that. Commentary is here to remind you about 80 fucking million fucking fucking times every fucking hour fucking. Okay. I just can't believe that they need to hammer that into everybody's skull. We're not all idiots. Sure, some people may watch out of habit and we may zone out. And quite frankly, when the Raw commentary team is the best commentary team they have, despite the fact that Corey fucking Graves is on it, that's that's really goddamn sad. The NXT team is an actual... Whatever. WWE... Vince needs to stop shouting in everybody's ears and just needs to stop having his goons shouting in everybody's ears. Just let the commentary breathe and actually tell a story. But anyway, starting out with a steel cage match isn't the worst thing in the world. Wall-to-wall uh, -wall action or whatever. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez was disappointed she couldn't be part of throwing minorities over the wall. So Owens uh, just grinds down on Big E, and suddenly Rollins shows up because he wants the match to continue, so he slams the door into their faces like, ha, 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 ha. And he gets right there near the barricade where the fans are. Hey, Rollins is taking all this shit in stride, and... I do hope, again, that fan that attacks Seth Rollins has the most miserable holiday or whatever and just freaking rots from the inside out in front of his family and loved ones, preferably, assuming that they haven't all disowned him, which, if I saw that fucker, I certainly would have disowned him. I would have said, get the fuck out of here. You don't even belong as part of the human race. You scum. <clears throat> so, um, they did a whole bunch of, you know, good stuff or whatever. Commentary did mention how Rollins wanted the match to continue because he enjoyed seeing two thick men pound and fist and try to top each other on camera. News at 10. And a big ending off the second rope. Holy shit, Big E manages to escape. My God, the WWE champion manages to win. Not a bad match. And then, man, that cage went up so goddamn fast, you would have thought it was Chris Benoit on his bow flex in June of 2007. And Rollins is attacking him, and then suddenly, Lashley's like, hey, I'm Bobby Lashley. I'm the Almighty. I'm going to take you all out. I don't care if I'm at least 10 years older than all of you. I'm going to destroy you all. And that's what he did. Because he wants to remind everybody that he is the Almighty, and also he's a former WWE champion. And why not find a way to put him in there? I mean, sure, multi-man matches get a little bit ridiculous, but this way, adding Lashley, you, you actually get to feature him on a pay-per-view. You might as well get the most out of him that you can, because he's on his last run. He's probably got a couple more years left. But Father Time is undefeated, and even though he's in incredible shape, get the maximize what you have with Lashley now. <clears throat> so, by the way, the Women's Tag Team Championships are fucking useless. So is Zelina. So is Carmella. Why are they being featured as wrestlers? Zelina's a hell of a goddamn talker when she's not doing this terrible accent. And we get Nikki Ash versus Rhea. Sweet fucking Christ, Rhea. Good 
God. Good God, Rhea. Taking on Zelina with Carmella. There was an attempt to have a match here. It's pretty bad when Nikki Ash is the one that I was actually rooting for here. And we get a chode red. One, two, three. There was not much to this match. I'm just going to move on from that. Why in God's name was Riddle given so much mic time? And that is a that is a recurring theme throughout this entire thing. He was trying to get Randy to wear a blazer. It's the RK Bronament. Nobody cares about anything that Riddle has to say. He's fine in the ring. Actually, he's very good in the ring. He's just a fucking nuisance and an annoyance. And I would rather bludgeon myself in the head with a goddamn sledgehammer than let not the sledgehammer that Cody Rhodes got from under the ring. But he doesn't need that because he still hasn't fucking gotten over it like a goddamn jilted ex. Let's get back to Raw, shall we? Um... So, where are the blazer and the crowd pops and everything? By the way, there was a fan backstage. After a fan rushed the ring, or, you know, rushed Seth Rollins, on, you know, on the ramp, staging area, whatever the fuck, recently. Yeah, let's have a fan roaming around backstage. And he want and, or, you know, she wants to get an autograph from Rhea, Nikki? Oh, no, I'm talking to him. And it's Lawler. And because this girl and every single one there, actually every single woman is over the age of 18, Lawler is allowed to legally be within, you know, 50 yards of them. And, oh, thanks, that's the best they could do for Lawler. You know, the king of Memphis, the one guy that if he had gone anywhere else, probably wouldn't have drawn nearly as well, but he drew well in Memphis because Memphis was a hell of a territory, and he did create a lot of business. He's also not allowed within any, uh, you know, within 100 yards of any school zone. I wonder why. So, um... Anyway, let's just move on from that. Riddle and Orton are on commentary. Well, Riddle is. Orton doesn't really say much of anything, which is probably the best for Orton at this point. We get the Street Profits versus Styles and Edward James Omos. It's a tournament match. There are four teams in this tournament. Why didn't you just say, hey, we're going to take these four teams and we're going to have a little tournament. We don't have to put a little stupid name on it, but whatever. Almost got tagged in, or actually tagged himself in when it looked like Styles was going to win, but then he's battling very lazily with Dawkins, and then he catches Ford and throws him back in the ring, even though Ford is a legal guy, and then almost is battling Dawkins and gets counted out. And Styles is like, no, you got to listen to me, you got to listen to me. <clears throat> and it's, and oh no, you know, Styles might be causing, you know, some, uh, you know, rifts in the almost sapien community. And then Riddle says, you know, my... My journalist integrity, you know, it, it, it it's at stake and everything. He probably did that, did 20 takes of that backstage, and that was the best he could come up with. Hey, Orton, you got anything to say? Nope. Because Orton's tired of all this shit. Remember when AJ Styles was actually seen as one of the best in the world? I know he's probably having fun. I'm not, I'm definitely not saying the Styles being buried or any of that stuff. I just feel like this, if this is the best you have for Styles, it might be best just to send him home. It might, might just be, the teaming with almost was fine. Now it's gotten stale. You can only keep something hot for so long. <laughs> and almost definitely is not ready to be a single star. I have a feeling they're going to feature him as such. So yeah, Styles was actually more upset at Riddle for, you know, being a bad family man and everything. Hey, Riddle, it, it, Riddle may have abandoned his family, but he didn't do what Benoit did to his. So Becky promo, no, no one once lived to win the belt. Except everybody. Literally everybody does, but she's being a heel. Um, why is there more Riddle on TV is what I'm asking. And he gets a double blazer or whatever, and I mean the jacket. So Damien Breeze took on Robert Roode uh, with Ziggler. It's Dolphin Roode. <laughs> it's a U.S. championship match. Commentary mentioned, hey, uh, Robert Roode is a former U.S. champion. Hands fucking up if you forgot that Roode was a U.S. champion until they said that. And I actually had to remember it was back in, I think... Uh, I think it was TLC 2017 that he won it, and then he dropped it at Fastlane 2018, if I recall correctly. I actually had to look up when he won. I totally fucking forgot. And it's something that's rude. I think Rude's tremendous. He just hasn't meant anything for a while. Um, This is a match. Ziggler kept interfering. We get a full-throated rectomain one, two, three. <laughs> and then Ziggler attacks him with a super kick right to his armpit. Good, good, good aiming there, Ziggler, you goddamn idiot. And then... um. Bianca's making her entrance, and then Piper blindsides her, and Piper apparently has new music, which is fine, because the old music sucks. By the way, her name is Piper Nevin. It's not that fucking, you know, Dee 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 Dee, get out of my laboratory. So, we get Lita Trish recaps about their, rum or their Raw main event or whatever. Um, I believe it was tomorrow, um, 17 years ago. Maybe it was today, 17 years ago. I'm trying to remember the date in my head. 
You know, Rolita uh, did, came back from a neck injury and did a head first dive, and I'm shocked didn't break her neck. And then we found out a few weeks later that Ed speared Lita, if you know what I mean. Boy, Lita got a raw deal there, if you'll see what I did there as well. Anyway, so Piper and Bianca, they tried. Look, there were some good moves in this match. I did not think that there was much chemistry here. Now, it wasn't bad. It was certainly better than Nikki Ash versus Zelina, but it still wasn't great. Piper, she's a good worker. I don't think she fits in the WWE system at all. I, I don't think she does. Bianca did try to pick her up at one point for the KOD, and even though it was a bit awkward, she did... You know, she almost managed to get her, and then uh, Piper just dumped out and said, nope, we're going to do the second count-out victory in, two, in you know, the last uh, two out of the last three matches. Good. Good work there. I would not be surprised if Piper just decides to go home. I don't know why they would do this. Why are you going to extend this feud to day one? I mean, it wasn't really all that well built of a feud anyway, <laughs> but whatever. So, we get recaps of Vince slapping Theory, and I'm amazed his face. Not Vince looks terrible. I know that nobody really looks that great at 75, but my God, Vince has aged, like, horribly. And this was Vince's uh, first TV appearance after he died, by the way, because if he ain't, if he ain't a walking corpse, I don't know what is. Uh, he's going to put Theory in a match? No, Theory wasn't ready, so he's not going to put him in a match. We get the SmackDown breakdown to fill more time. I don't mind that they do this, and then they do the Raw rebound on SmackDown, but... Sometimes I feel like it cuts into the matches. Oh boy, Ms. TV. At least there was no Marie, so we didn't need captions on top of captions on top of fucking captions. But also we need captions on top of captions to understand what the fuck Vince was saying. Here's Edge. Miz was upset because nobody went to bat for him, and it wasn't because he was eating chicken over somebody's bag. Whose bag was it? Why, only the best wrestling family man in history, and if only they had tapped out, he wouldn't have gone to his Bowflex machine and done that. Moving on, it was Chris Benoit. It was Chris Benoit, in case you didn't know. But Miz is all upset. Miz, you're an asshole. You're a hypocrite, Edge. Uh, I don't care about this feud. I don't. I. This is what you're going to use one of Edge's appearances on? A feud with Miz? No. <clears throat> um, 2022 will be the year of Miz, and 2022 fucking sucks. They, it's not, Miz has overachieved. He is way fucking overachieved. I do not need to see Miz in any kind of title program at all. It's going to be a day one. And Liv says that she will win about that. Um, who gave Dominic, uh, you know, more mic time? And why does he look like the Green Ranger right before he lost his powers? If you get it, you get it. We get a beer vignette. He's coming eventually, soon, maybe. I think Apu will come back to The Simpsons before Veer appears on, uh, on Raw. Why is Riddle back on commentary? Why is Riddle here? The Mysterios took on Gable and Majin Buu, and we get a tournament match. Another tournament match. Majin Buu does a few things. Gable's very good in the ring, and gets rolled up after missing a moonsault. He gets rolled up, because why don't you just fucking do more goddamn roll-ups? Dominic wins. Hooray! Easter Island gets represented there. And at least Majin Buu laid out Riddle afterwards, so that was something good that he did. <clears throat> and then Vince, um, Vince stops, um... Or stops to tell Theory, hey, you know, Theory, stop, you know, stop doing your jumping jacks. I gotta get off the phone here, but stop doing your jumping jacks or whatever. You don't have a match. If you close your eyes during this, it takes on a whole new meaning. It's like, it's like, I could do this all day, man. It's like, stop, stop. That doesn't impress me. Oh, oh, yeah, I like that. Have, have fun. Have fun on seeing that, folks, because if I have to picture this, then so do all of you people. Um, use your brain. Boy, we're fucked. I mean, no wonder there was so much goddamn steam coming out of that room. Steam! So, Balor, he just displaying his massive Balor club for everybody worldwide. He takes on Dijakovic. That's his name. And the match has certainly happened. It had some good power and good, some good speed and some good moves. And I also didn't care. It ended after Balor went deep in his guts to get the victory. Might as well make this as gross as possible. <clears throat> and then... Theory attacks Balor afterwards, because Balor, apparently, because he's so fucking good, has to work with Theory. And we started to see what was on Theory's phone. We don't need to see what's on Theory's phone, ever. 24-7 stuff with Dana, uh, Tozawa in a trash can, which is fitting for that gimmick, not for the person, Truth, and also Reggie is saying, hey, I, you know, doing a good job and everything. Tamina, Tamina gets to abuse women and be in a pointless picture. It's just like her dad later in his career. So anyway, <clears throat> the Memphis lynch mob, they're out in full force. Could word this a whole lot better, but I'm not going to. 
And Lashley and MVP are backstage. That was Becky making her entrance, by the way. We had about 27 minutes at that point. Lashley and MVP are backstage. That's what happens when you disrespect me. Live video package with footage from Live Forever, which I did a review of because people asked me to, and actually it was very eye-opening about Live. So Becky versus Liv, Raw Women's Championship match with 15 minutes left. Shout out to Shroommeister for calling that, by the way, when he tweeted out. <laughs> um, scintillating camera work during this match, I had to point out. There was some good action here. It, it took a bit to build, I think, because Liv hadn't been featured in a spot like this. I'm not saying it was just nerves. I'm not saying she was the only one that had nerves, because Becky, even though she has done really good since coming back, did just have a kid, you know, within the last year, so obviously there's going to be a little bit more, you know, coming back from that. And maybe they were a little bit, you know, a little bit tentative, you know, when it came to, like, you know, being in the main event. But given that Becky has been on the big stage before and Liv wanted this really bad, they got it. It took a little bit, but they got it. There was no, there were no botches or anything. It just took a little bit to build. Once it started, they got some good stuff with some good... With some good mat wrestling. A dive. Liv was holding her ribs. So selling that. Becky focused on that. Hit a nice superplex. Some very, very good stuff. Um, we got a Rings of Saturn at one point by Liv. Beautifully done. Transitioned into the Disarmor. And we got some more action. And then we got the most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling. The surprise roll up. One, two, three. With the ropes. Oh no. Becky has the victory. And man, she just managed to win that. Pull that one right out. Pull it right out on Liv. Hmm. She managed to just get that victory just by the skin of her teats. I think that's how that saying goes. But Becky retains the Women's Championship. And uh, Liv says, this is not over. It will never be over, Becky Lynch Anderson. It will never be over. Boy, I really could have tried to not force feed that one. Yeah, this Raw was fine. It was fine. It was just absolutely fine. <sighs> I'm going to be doing my favorite and least favorite matches list pretty soon, by the way, just so you know. So look out for those, at least within the next week. Agree, disagree with what I said? Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.